What I do is inconsequential. Why I do what I do is I get to shorten people's journeys every day. What I love about our hospitality industry is that it's our mission to make people feel cared for while on their journeys. Together, we'll explore what hospitality means in the built environment, in business, and in our daily lives. I'm Dan Ryan, and this is Defining Hospitality. Today's guest is an entrepreneur, a speaker, a moderator, and business development expert, and a world traveler. She's a leadership, well-being, and energy coach. She's the founder of Life by Design Academy, Natalia Burdikan. Welcome, Natalia. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Uh, for, thank you for agreeing to be here uh, and giving us your time. And I think that's a great transition because oftentimes I hear that the most valuable asset anyone has and the most precious asset is time. But I've been thinking about that since I've gotten to know you. And okay, I agree with that. But also, if you don't have the energy to use your time in the best possible, most impactful way or, how, or intentional way, what does time really matter? So tell us about what being an energy coach is all about. That's a wonderful introduction into that. It's exactly that. It's not about managing time. It's about managing energy. And so the question is, what is energy to you? Oh, well, that's a great question. So the question for me on what is energy to me, it's, okay, we all have life coming at us full steam ahead. We're all assaulted by every kind of input, whether it's a walk in the woods the work in front of us, our family, um, everything is coming at us. And all we can do really is focus on one thing at a time. I, I think that people who say that they can multitask, I don't really believe them. I think really we can do one thing at a time. So it's really getting to the place where as personal energy, when I decide to focus on something intentionally, how do I make sure that my reservoir is full enough to deal with that in a impactful and resonant way? You've got that. And that the intentionality part, that's part of the type of energy that is actually constructive and like a building force. It works like a building force versus the reactive kind of state it's more a disruptor at the end and it's draining as well. But uh, so- And it's, it's interesting. I, I, and I'm, I, I meant to cut you off right there because you said something that struck me, right? It's, there's this idea of being proactive or intentional and then reactive. And we all go through moments, I believe of being proactive, intentional, but there are times when I just find myself totally reactive. Life is just coming at me full steam ahead. And when I'm in those reactive modes, it's exhausting. So how do we, actually, before we, let's package that one up right there. And then what I want to ask you is, because this is about hospitality and making others feel comfortable, how does energy tie into that? And how do you define hospitality? And then I want to pull, pull on that thread. Oh, there are two questions right there. How do you well, the first one, how do you define hospitality? How do you Talia? define hospitality? Well, someone that, like you said, traveled around the world and stayed in all sorts of places, and we are all being served one way or another, from which gives me, gets me to that definition of feeling comfortable, being supported, being heard, and being understood whether it is at the hotel, at the restaurant, at the hospital, at the airport, at the airplane, it's making people feel comfortable. I know you have a beautiful phrase of, you know, feeling home away from home. That's great. What if you're on the way? And feeling in the space of comfort and of being like you're not being stressed and frustrated that you're on the way somewhere, I would also find as the hospitality part, if, yeah. So- Seamless service, positive service. Support. Correct, so, okay. So when it, so I'm hearing and in this exploration of what hospitality means to everyone, the surprising thing to me is, okay, it's how you make people feel and making others feel comfortable and serving others, but it's really also this idea of 
truly being empathetic and tapping into what the person you're serving, what their needs are. And I was hoping you could walk us through some ways that we're, how, how can someone who is really trying to anticipate someone else's needs open up their energy or, can, or fill their energy reservoir so that they can do that? Because often if you're always focusing on others, it's also rather depleting as well. So how can we manage that to make sure that others are having an impactful time. Yeah. Well, it goes both ways. As you know, energy attracts like energy and whatever energy you come with to the person that you're talking to or people you're talking to or pick up your phone or write an email or have a Zoom conversation, the energy that one has comes across and it's either contagious in a positive way or it's disruptive and, and toxic, mm-hmm. you know? Okay, so walk us through a place where you sense, let's say you're walking into a restaurant or a hotel, you sense it getting toxic because there's all this stuff that's happening right now where people are just being nasty to their servers and mean and unkind. How can someone walking into that where you sense the tipping happen, how can we marshal our energy or what's, what are some good ways to marshal our energy and just kind of stabilize? Right. Well, there are several tips and tricks. When you notice a different type of energy, I mean, what can you do? You cannot change a person. You can positively possibly influence, but it comes, it starts with your own energy. And I, it's understandable if someone is coming at you at the reception or at the restaurant and is being mean and rude and wants to complain to your manager because X, Y, Z, the natural reaction would be defensiveness and feeling of either feeling offended and withdraw and feeling helpless or getting frustrated and being defensive and start blaming others. So either take the blame or start blaming others, whether the other is the person that's coming at you or not, or someone else behind the counter. So, and I'm explaining their different energy levels right there. So basically what happens is having the mindset and it comes with awareness and practice, having the mindset of not taking it personally. So this is one tip, not taking it personally, because it's never about you. As we know, if someone is pissing us off, it tells more about it tells us more about the other person than you know, it's a mirror. So never take anything personally. And you mentioned the empathy part. So yeah, how much time do you really have for the awareness of what's going on for that person? Because if it's not about me, something must be going on with that person. Whether you want to get very deep, there's no time for mentoring and coaching that person the moment. You just need to serve the person, right? But if you come from the position of, I understand you, or start to want to understand you. I understand you. I want to help you. Let's find a win-win solution. Your energy is resonating at a higher level you're coming across in a different way than if you start being offended and being defensive because when we feel offended or defensive our energy lowers and then the way we come across changes and then what we start saying you know that reactive mode etc etc our actions then are very different than if we come from the level of you know i understand you let's work it out now the question is, how do you understand and what, what do you need to do to understand where that person is coming from? If you have the tools. I, I get that. And a lot of that has to do with awareness. So I would say most of the time, and it takes a lot of practice. If I feel myself getting defensive, sometimes I don't notice. I'm just, I'm just going through life and, and, uh, and I react a certain way. Um, but how in your experience, can you teach this kind of more self-awareness 
for other people who are running restaurants or hotels? I think it's it's such, and I worked in the in, in the restaurants. I think I went through three different restaurants all at the same time while finishing my study in Amsterdam. So I know the restaurant business, and it it is tough, and you gotta love it. I mean, it's 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 your life basically, and you're constantly with cara uh, publico, you know, the face to the public, right? There can never be a bad day. Well. You know, at least you shouldn't be showing it to your customers. And so what I learned, but that came with time and trying to manage energy versus everything else is things like the awareness, you need to be aware about yourself, where you are, and also the other person and the environment. And it can take a split second you know, and what helps me a lot is the breathing. You're saying reactive, we should be responsible, responsive. Responsibility, responsibility is the ability to respond. And in order to respond responsibly, we need to process it. So in order to give us time to process it, breathing is the best thing to do because it actually gives us the, the ability to think more clearly, connect to our intuition, connect to, to the senses, see the other person, feel the other person. And it's that it's elevating that energy, that resonance, instead of being in the defensive mode and thinking about yourself. And there is no ego, that's another thing. If you, the, the tips, right? So not taking anything personally, not having the ego in it. It's not about me. It's not about my needs. It's not like someone is going to kill me and, and take my house and all the money. So there is no need to be defensive. No judgment. No judgment about myself. If, if there's something I did wrong, because I know in the moment, I always do the best I can. And I know the next time I'm going to do it better. And no judgment about the person. So being very neutral and not have emotions attached to it. And at times we don't have the time for all of that processing, but it's with practice. And the self-care part. So you mentioned, and it's rightly so, it is extremely exhausting, extremely draining, and extremely frustrating at times to be of service and support to others, to constantly be there for the other people. And so that is depleting and it is draining. And so people tap into the sense of feeling overwhelmed or feeling frustrated. So in order to have the balance, the self-care is very important. Also the self-love and the self-compassion. Because if your glass is not full or if you don't have the mask on yourself, how can you support the other, right? Hence those things that, and it's individual for everybody, things that make me feel more balanced. Whether it is before I go to work, you know, doing meditation, swimming, and, yoga, what have you, breathing. And I'm talking about small things. You can do like mindfulness exercises, say you're behind reception or about to take the plates. Some kind of mindfulness thingies. Um, Shirzad is, is calling it pick you ups. Kind of like mindfulness exercise in that last one minute to five minutes. You know, you can use your senses. You can touch something. You can look at something further ahead and look and notice the textures and the tones of the colors and everything, or listen far away or close. So you are moving your attention away from what you are experiencing here that takes your emotion to the escalated level and you becoming more neutral and also more present, things like that. Natalia, um, tell me, speaking about just being understood and heard. I know you've said that a lot. Um, tell me about a time when you've walked into a situation, it was a bit chaotic, but someone was able to 
cut through all of the chatter and make you feel understood and heard? I think if I could recall situations when you were explaining that I could see a room full of people in chaos, actually, and someone coming at me, seeing me, connecting to me, it's like nothing else exists. And this ability to pause and ask and hear what, what is going on with me, what's happening with me, what are my needs, and how can that person support? That's it. And it doesn't have to take much. You know, it's all about that connection. Often, as we learn about energy and maintaining energy and keeping our reservoirs full and all the self-care that's necessary, it kind of falls into this bucket of wellness. And one of the big trends I'm seeing right now in hospitality is wellness. How do you see wellness tying into hospitality in the future? A lot, a lot, considering that, you know, restaurants is all about health, hopefully, <laughs> pleasure, of course, and indulgence, but there is definitely a big trend of healthy eating and being very conscious and aware of our bodies and what we indulge does to us more and more so I think there is this trend of eco hotels and you know when you have a farm right next to the hotel and all the foods that is being served and made is actually produced at that local farm next to the hotel I stayed at one here nearby Barcelona beautiful when, when, and and it's, not only it's great for marketing, marketing, but actually as a consumer, as a, as a customer, you really understand that it's healthier, it's better. So one would choose a place that serves, well, if people are into health and wellness and want to live longer and feel more energy, you would choose a place that serves good food, nutritious, healthy. And that is that point about care and self-care and feel comfortable and welcome because people would more likely to come. And when you start working with a new client, how do you make them feel comfortable? I think I would have to repeat the same thing I said when you're in the middle of the crazy crowd and there's so many things going on taking the pause and connecting and really understanding what is going on for that person how do you do that and magic i don't know <laughs> we just try to can't give you all my secrets but i think there is a lot of acknowledging and validating and that is something that people of service and hospitality can definitely do in practice. Acknowledging and validating the person because we just want to be heard and, and think that we're okay, that it's normal to feel the way we feel. We don't how, did you, how did you find your way into this energy management and energy coaching? What do you mean? Like, how did you find your how calling I, in this? How yeah, how did, when did you know? Well, several years ago, I was running a chocolate factory in, in Belgium, which I absolutely loved. I loved what I did and I loved the people and the place and product is, is beautiful. And at some point, I just felt completely drained. Now that emotional and spiritual exhaustion feel like it's just either too much or it's not your thing and it's not aligned with who I wasn't aligned with who I was deep inside that whatever is at the core of you know the essence of me and there's a lot to do with values and alignment and purpose and the meaning in life and all that stuff but um, that lack of energy and 
what people would call a burnout. They just don't want to call it a burnout because I love that idea. How can you have a burnout if you love what you do, right? But at that point, I knew something had to change because it looked really all good. It just didn't feel right. And when you don't know what to do, things need to change. Period. And I went undergone the education, went to the coaching institute, IPAC, by Bruce Schneider, who developed energy leadership methodology. And it has quite a big aspect of spirituality, and not in the religious sense, but in the sense of being connected and in spirit with yourself that what is at the core of your thoughts, emotions, and actions? What is actually behind that energy that you're exhibiting? Because you can have disruptive thoughts that lead to negative feelings, and therefore it makes you do what we do or not want to do something, and being reactive and being disruptive, and then the results are different. So hence what I was talking about when you come with a different energy to your customers, the results are directly proportional to the kind of energy you come with. And also the way you experience it in the process is different. And it can be as simple as changing your thoughts if one knows how to do it. But in reality, there is so much more behind it. And that's what we do. We look really at what is behind what is happening and what is at the core of those thoughts or limiting beliefs or the feelings that people have and therefore but well companies come with the thing like well my people don't perform or whatever but no one is really understanding what's happening with that person you just look at the results but we're not human doings we're human beings and that's the same with but you ask how do you connect to customers? It's interesting because you know I hear I heard you say that you know well, if I really love what I do I love it I love it I love it but then there's this burnout on the other side and I've heard so many people say oh if you do what you love you'll you know it's never work you never get burnt out so how did you come to the realization that you love what you did but you were burnt out? I think now that I know with energy leadership stuff as well, is that I became disruptive for myself and others. It's like, and that's where in energy leadership, we talk about two types of energy, the one that is disruptive and the one that is constructive and healing. So the disruptive one, the sense of fleeing or fighting is two of those energies, that feeling of competitiveness and I have to do it and I have to prove it and I have to make it work and I push myself and I push the others, et cetera, et cetera. The thing is, it's not sustainable. So when you're in that state for too long, basically what happens is the body produces the hormones, the catabolic hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. So what happens is that the body believes it's under stress so the hormones are there to push through the stress. But what happens is if it's too long, you become drained and you also physically start feeling sick. Hence the depressions, the burnouts and the sicknesses and all of that. So it's all good to run marathons. The question is how long can you do it? Well, there's an Ironman that, you know, we've done 50 days and 50 states uh, triathlons. And then you, one needs to recover for a very long time after. Same thing with, you know, hitting deadlines and being under pressure for too long. You exhaust your body. And it's mentally also clearly affecting people stop concentrating and all that. So I think this is a really timely conversation, Natalia, because especially in hospitality, we're, we're all serving, we're all giving, giving, giving. And hospitality, yes, in our industry, but also everyone is giving and receiving hospitality at any moment, but in our industry specifically, we're giving from our energy stores to others and hearing, and, and that's draining. Then we have so many people have left hospitality and there's been such a reduction in headcount, but the work has kind of stayed the same. So 
if you think about this on a mass scale, um, I feel like we're at a really pivotal juncture because people aren't wanting to come back into here. Um, so for the people that are there and that are struggling, what advice can you give them? The people that are owning hospitality businesses? Well, or anyone that, who's delivering hospitality right now. That's a good question. And that's, I can relate it to the question you asked before about if you're passionate about what you do, how can you get burned out? I would think, and I'm no one to give advice in here, we can brainstorm a lot, but having, having the care part for the people that work with you, that balancing part, they're working together collectively, you know, connecting to people's geniuses, passions, and talents to come up with solutions and support each other as a team and as a group, because it is a teamwork. I mean, I remember working in, in, in restaurants and the fun part was working with the other person. That's how I met my hus ex-husband, uh, the Spanish in the Spanish restaurant, of course. So, and it was amazing working with the person and, and that's that coherence and synergy that you, you could can create working together. So if hospitality organizations can create that atmosphere where not only the clients feel comfortable and protected and supported and served and understood and heard, but also the people that are working with you for that common goal to nurture, nurture them and give them that self care and the balance. So from your, not advice, but just from the experience of seeing what that could look like, what that possible outcome could look like, um, what's the best experience of hospitality you've ever received? Good question. I would say I'm, I keep on thinking seamless and effortless hospitality where it's not at your face, but it's supportive and just enough. And so, and I think for that, you really need the people that can feel others and not just going, you know, like a bulldozer. And where that's was that? Like, where, give me any, a time, like, it could be a small moment, a big moment. Like, where was an, a, a place that you experienced that? Um, it's hard to say. I think there are a few restaurants that are, when people are just checking in and seamlessly taking your plate and asking when necessary, what else would you like? and But without it being too much. And somehow when you ask the question, I recall that trip to South Africa, to Swaziland, out of all the places where we had monkeys stealing <laughs> the cakes in the morning because there were no doors or windows. So it was like an open, strange situation. And I had the scorpion in my shower. But um, speaking of scorpion, the lady did come to pick up the scorpion. It was still alive. And she's like, don't worry. It's not the one that, <laughs> that kills you. I'm like, okay, good. Um, but they were just not always there at your face. Mm -hmm. So it's just enough and just the right thing. And for that, one really needs to connect and understand and feel the other. Mm. Goes back to that empathy. And, you know. and with all of the travels that you do, because I feel like you're always somewhere. You're always somewhere else, right? You're, you're always moving. It's like, where in the world is, is Natalia? Um, how do you make yourself feel comfortable when you're, on, when you're constantly on the move? Well, one thing is I have my stuff in five different countries. So if I have something that I, I ident identify with, with me, I already feel comfortable. And... Um, for, for me, I think the, the key is a good bed and a good pillow. 
I think this is for me is the key thing. Because that's the ultimate restoration is, is when you're turned off. Yeah. Hmm. And then the that, tea. <laughs> but they, they say it's different for everybody. Right. And then um, if you think about where we are right now and where you are right now, um, what's keeping you up at night now? My dog at the moment. I got this three months old puppy. But um, I would think, how can I support and help as many people in the organization as I can to live and work in the way that is of less struggle and effort and still feel that sense of fulfillment and well-being and achieve what they want. I mean, we can have the cake and eat it too. Yeah. And then going with that theme of, of helping as many people and impacting as many people as you can, um, what's exciting you most about the future? At creating it. And if you work with energy leadership, you know that we are a creator of our experiences as much as there can be uncertainty and whatever stuff around. We are creating our experience and the future is today. So whatever we do and however we come across affects what we do so our thoughts affect our feelings and affect our behaviors and actions and therefore results and if we if the thoughts are disturbing then we need to do something about the belief system and those fears and all the assumptions and all these things that are just keeping us all that luggage and you asked about travel i like to travel with least luggage and it's the same with the baggage that comes from the past and all this stuff that is in our head weighing us down. As you are helping create the future um, and you think about the organizations and the people, how, like how are you doing it? Raising their awareness and consciousness. Mm -hmm. I think the principal part is the awareness. I mean, we go back to your initial question, how can you make people feel more comfortable and how can you be less exhausted? I can tell you, if I would have been more aware at the time, what drains me? Yes, I was passionate about what I did, but there were all the other symptoms I wasn't picking up because we stopped listening to our body and body never lies. And that's the self-care is important. And then if you were to think about um, you, Natalia, just about to finish college, right? You're, I don't know, you're 18 to 20, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to decide where you want to go in life. Um, where are you right then and there? Like, where were you at that point in your life physically? I was in Amsterdam. You were in Amsterdam. So knowing, seeing how you went through burnout, found energy leadership and um, kind of found this new passion and impact for others. Um, if you could go back to that 18 or 20, 20 year old Natalia in Amsterdam, what would you tell yourself? I would say, don't worry, it's going to be okay. And how would that 18 or 20 year old Natalia take that information? Ah, well, be as rebellious as, as, as hell, but uh and the thing, that's the thing is that we have to go through, have to, we don't have to do anything, but it is a journey and there is no good or bad energy. You know, it all serves a purpose. The question is how do we use it you know, with, the, with purpose intentionally or not? But all the experiences I had, and it seemed like I lived so many different lives, a part of so many different countries and industries and whatnot. But all of that, serve the purpose to be where I am now and I don't think I will change a thing because it made me who I am now mm -hmm. and all that experience I can sort of take through me and share it back 
And then from your chocolatiering business, what, what's your favorite kind of chocolate? I would love I love the dark. Actually, when I went to Colombia to the to the plantations, I really like the raw bean. I don't know mm. if you've ever tried. You just chew the raw bean. No, I haven't exactly, tried that. Exactly, exactly. It's uh, it's it's strong, but this for me is the best. So if I were to choose, I'd say a ninety hundred percent dark chocolate, because you actually wow. taste the chocolate rather than the sugar, because everything mm -hmm. else is pure sugar, and that's what I mean. We were producing eighty percent sugar. Item. I mean, okay, it was chocolate coated and sugar, but in the milk chocolate, you have sugar and then you have the sugar in addition. It's just way too much. Speaking of um, wellness and stuff. <laughs> so, I, in thinking about, I, I want to go back to just creating our, our future and all and trying to impact as many people to have as much energy as possible to do that. What are the means by which you're teaching people how to tap into this? Well, we take, we do energy leadership index assessment that I have, and we go into a, a very deep journey of understanding where their energy or consciousness or perception mindset is at when everything is good, because we behave very differently and feel differently when everything's great on a good day. And the same, what is our state under stress that we tap to? tend to tap into the lower energy state. And the question is, why do we get there? And we really, you know, reveal, peel the onion sort of. And I walk people through the methodology so they can use it for themselves and for their businesses and their families afterwards. And really that introduction into understanding where they are at and what is affecting and influencing the energy, what is blocking them. And, how to move forward to their most optimal states and create the life they want and the experience they want. Because whatever we experience comes across. So it's not only about ourselves, it's also about others. And it sort of circulates back. So everything, energy attracts like energy and everything is energy at the end. So, you know, physics, Einstein talked a lot about it. Not voodoo science. Uh, so it's, and then, uh, Natalia, if people wanted to connect with you, where, how do they find you? Well, you will provide my first and last name, right? Natalia Vintikan. Oh, yeah. It'll all the, all that will be in the show notes, but just give us a little rundown now as far Is as... Is this uh, a LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. It's the same name, so it's easy to find. And then www.lifebydesign-academy.com. You can sign up to connect, to receive inspirations about energy and more and... There's lots of resources on the website that are free and happy to talk to anyone further on the subject. Wonderful. Um, so Natalia, I just want to say thank you so much for being here and talking to us about energy. And, you know, time is important and valuable, but I think how we march into time with our energy is more important. At this high energy state, time is an illusion, so... We can bring the future to you and the other way around depends how you want to experience it. I love that. And I think we all can learn so much from that, um, especially as we are making others feel comfortable. So I just want to say thank you to you. I want to say thank you to our listeners. And if you're intrigued by this um, idea of replenishing and marshalling your energy in the most effective way, please reach out to Natalia. And also if you've learned something different about yourself or thought differently about hospitality, please share the podcast with someone else. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone and we will see you next time. Thank you.